Okay, so I wanted to do a quick review on factoring, and I'm going to do some more complicated look, but I want to point out that all factoring is similar, and that if you can do this one in the red, then you can do this one in the black. So, you know, this is just a quick greatest common factor problem, and we have both terms, both containing a factor of e to the x, and so then we can take an e to the x out front, And we're left with 2 plus sine of x. So again, I'm going to do the, the trinomial. I'm going to factor the trinomial in the black. Uh, but these are the same. You know, if you feel comfortable uh, factoring the trinomial in the red, then you treat the black one just the same. And as a side note, you can always change what you're given into something a little more uh, easy looking so long as before you answer the question you change it back. I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to work with all of this. Remember what's important are the coefficients and uh, the, the other parts just kind of come along and, and uh, so just keep in mind that you're working really with just the coefficients. Um, there's many ways that you guys can factor. I like to do what's called the A times C method I don't care if you do the A times C method or not. You need to be able to factor relatively quickly. Um, I'm going to write out the steps. Hopefully you can do this one quicker than this. But the steps of A times C method be 1 times negative 12 being negative 12. And then you're thinking of factors of that number that add to give you negative 4. And that would be a negative 6 and a positive 2. So again, I hope that you don't have to go through this. But if you do, that's okay. Uh, I need you to be able to factor. Okay, and if you're doing the A times C method, it's nice because now it's the same every time. Once you rewrite um, the rewrite this in four terms, then it's just doing greatest common factor. And again, these two coefficients multiply to give us 1 times negative 12 and add to give us negative 4. Now I'm going to take a sine of x out of the first two. And I'm left with a sine of x minus 6. I'm going to take a positive 2 out of the second or the final 2, right third and fourth term there. And I'm left with a sine x minus 6. And now you see that there's two terms left, both of which have a sine x minus 6. And then when you factor out that sine x minus 6 out of both those terms, you're left with a sine x plus 2. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate the A times C method on another one where A is not 1. And this, you know, when A is 1, you know, you should be able to go pretty quickly. When A is something besides 1, um, you know, I like to really do the A times C method and think it out. Again, the one in the red is exactly the same as the one in the black. Um, and I'm going to work on the one in the black here. So A times C method says 6 times negative 15. Um, and I'll write these out, right? 6 times negative 15 is negative 90. And now we're thinking of factors of negative 90 that add to give us positive 1. And you can list them all out until you find them. This one's not too bad, right? You have 10 times negative 9. That gives you negative 90 and adds to give you the positive 1. And the positive 1 is what we're looking for because that's the middle term. So now I'm going to rewrite that. So then it's going to be 6e to the 2x plus 10e to the x minus 9e to the x minus 15. And now all you're doing is grouping the first two terms and taking out whatever you can and that is going to be a 2e to the x when you factor that out, you'd be left with a 3e to the x plus 5. And now I'm going to take out a negative 3, right, just the greatest common factor I can. That leaves me with a 3e to the x plus 5. We now have these two terms that both have a common factor being 3e to the x plus 5. 
And when we take that out, we're left with 2e to the x minus 3. Okay, so here is a difference of squares problem. Again, the red one is the same as the black one. You know, your goal on all of these is to identify these things as factorable, and once you do that, then you're just doing what you always did with factoring. Difference of squares, once you identify it as difference of squares, which means two terms, each term being a perfect square, and they are being subtracted, then all you're doing is taking the square root of each term. So the square root of sine squared is sine. And the square root of... 4 cosine squared is 2 cosine. And 1 gets a plus and 1 gets a minus. Okay, for the final example, I'm going to do a difference of cubes. And I wrote in the green kind of the formula that you have to memorize for it. Uh, and it's not too bad, um, but, you know, uh, we talked about using soap. Uh, to do this to remember the signs because the um, the sum of cubes is exactly the same except the signs are different so I like when I do these um, when I'm trying to remember how to do these I like to tell myself what each of these are with respect to what I'm given and what I'm trying to factor okay so I'm going to list those out so you see it um, and so that means that in our problem a is going to be e to the x, b is going to be cosine of x, a squared then would be e to the 2x, and b squared would be cosine squared of x. Um, now all you're doing is applying, uh, worrying about your signs, and again that's where you use soap. So the factored form of the uh, polynomial in the black there is going to be e to the x, same sign, so subtract, cosine of x, times a squared, so in this case e to the 2x, opposite sign, so plus, these two multiplied together, then this one's always positive, cosine squared of x. Okay, so, you know, get some practice in on these, and, um, you know, really identifying that you can factor is going to be important.